welcome back in the lecture series on sampling design and sampling techniques today i will discuss the sampling techniques which can be clubbed together and be labeled as probability sampling before i proceed to what is probability sampling and what are the various techniques that are clubbed together under the probability sampling technique i would first present a, a schematic representation of the types of sampling techniques or types of sampling methods as you can see in this pictorial representation that broadly the sampling methods or procedures can be classified into two groups one is the probability sampling and another is non probability sampling what is probability sampling i will tell you just after the slide but in brief probability sampling is a sampling technique in which the probability of being included in the sample of any unit or element is equal or there is a fair chance of selection of each and every unit in the sample this probability sampling techniques can further be divided into two broader categories one is simple random sampling or unrestricted random sampling unrestricted because in random selection of units we do not impose any condition on restriction for example in restricted random sampling we impose some condition like we will select 70% of the participants from male population and 30% from the female population so we are doing random selection but with a restriction with a condition that we have to sample from two different strata but such restrictions are not imposed then those techniques can be called as unrestricted random sampling or simple random sampling and in this simple random sampling each and every unit is selected randomly and again there are two conditions either we select the unit and then keep it back in the pool or the population so that random sampling or simple random sampling is called simple random sampling with replacement so we are selecting one unit and then again replacing it and then another is without replacement we will select one unit and then we will not select them again because we are not reverting back the selected units into the population in restricted random sampling there are three techniques one is called stratified random sampling in which we pose restriction or a condition that random selection will be done but in some proportion from different strata of the population that is strata will be based on so gender like male and female it may be based on religion like uh, hindu sikh or any other religion so there are different ways when i will teach you the stratified random sampling i will explain it and this can further be divided into two categories proportionate and disproportionate i will explain it when i will discuss it another is systematic sampling here we impose restriction that we select the first unit randomly but all other units are selected with the condition that we will select the next nth unit 
So, for example, we had to select 10 participants. We selected one participant from the population using the random number procedure, random number table. And then every after 10, every 11th, so the first, then the 10th, then 20th, then 30th, then 40th participant will be selected. So we are imposing a restriction and therefore it is classified under restricted sampling. And the third one is cluster sampling, it is also called multi-stage sampling that I will discuss today itself. On the other hand, there are a group of sampling techniques which are jointly clubbed together and are called non-probability sampling. So, in very simple terms, non-probability sampling includes those sampling techniques in which the probability or chance of selecting any unit into the sample is not fair or equal. And this includes a number of techniques. I have listed a few like convenience, judgment, quota, snowball, saturation and then sampling. All these will be discussed in the le next lecture. Today I will discuss the probability sampling and by now you might have understood that probability sampling, whether it is restricted or unrestricted or any of the types that I have listed here, involves some form of random selection. So, repeating this random selection procedure, so whenever you will be asked to write about any of the techniques, say for example a stratified random sampling, then you will have to narrate the procedure of random selection. So just to avoid repeating the same random selection procedure again and again with all these five techniques of probability sampling, simple random sampling with replacement, simple random sampling without replacement, stratified random sampling, systematic sampling and cluster sampling. I will first tell the method of random selection and then I will be discussing in brief about each of these techniques. So before I discuss, let us define probability sampling. As I said earlier, the probability sample is one in which every element in the population has a known fair and equal as well as a non-zero chance of inclusion into the sample. So we can now say that any unit is having a zero probability of being selected. The probability is always non-zero and it is equal or fair. In this method of sampling, the units are selected through a random selection method. And the random selection method may utilize different techniques that I will tell you. Random selection method requires processes or procedures that assures that the different units in the population have a fair probability of being chosen. This is one and the only condition that is important while we are doing random sampling or probability sampling. What are the advantages of this probability sampling technique as a whole? I am not mentioning any one type of probability sampling. Then we can list a few. For example, detailed information about each element of the universe is not needed. But suppose we are doing some non-probability sampling like purposive sampling. Suppose we want to recruit depressed individuals having melancholy episode, then we must have these informations, otherwise we will not be able to recruit the participants. But such detailed information about each element of the universe is not needed. Second, this provides unbiased estimate of the population parameter. 
So the sample statistics is considered unbiased estimate of the population parameter. Third, generalization from sample to population can be done with more accuracy, with greater accuracy. And there is little chance of sampling bias. And I have already discussed what is sampling bias. Some disadvantages or limitations of this technique. First, it requires high level of skills. Though when I will describe you with non-statistical details, I will not discuss the mathematical and statistical formula and rational underlying all these sampling. But in real practice, this requires the knowledge and the skill of statistics to draw a random sample. There is one organization of the government of India, it is called National Sampling Survey Organizations, that has employed many skilled professionals from statistics and their job is just to do the sampling, provide the procedure and techniques for sampling the units. So high level of skill is needed. Another limitation is that almost all probability sampling techniques, they involve high cost and high cost in terms of time and effort. And definitely it will also involve money. So in terms of time, efforts and money, it is costly. Now let us see, uh, uh, third limitation is that Generally, it is very difficult to use this procedure when sampling frame is difficult to define or the population is not a finite population, it is infinite population, then it will be really difficult to implement the probability sampling. However, when I will discuss the techniques, there are some uh, ways uh, to do random sampling in these difficult situations also. Now, let us come on the methods of random selection. So, the very simple method that we can follow is lottery method or it is also called Fisbao draw. But this type of method is more suited for a small samples, suppose for your practical classes and practical purpose you want to select two students from your class, then you can have a list. So first step is that you will number all the units of the population or of the sampling frame and then write the numbers on the paper. For example, taking example of your classroom, I will write the name of each and every student and assign one number starting from 1 and ending at n. Say you are 70 students, so 1 to 70. And then I will write all numbers 1 to 70 on 70 pieces of paper, slips. And then we will put them together in any box, any bowl or any hat or in any container and we will mix them, all the slips we will mix together and we will ask any blindfolded person to randomly pick a list from the container, from the box, from the bowl, from the head, whatever you call. And the unit with the number, so suppose I picked, I am a blindfolded person and I picked a slip and number 14 is written then the student who is at serial number 14 or at roll number 14 will be selected in the sample. And we will repeat this step 2 and 3 that is picking up the slips and then including the big participant in the sample. Again and again but to a point where we reach the desired sample size. So if you have to select 10 participants, 
we will repeat this process 10 times. So this is very simple and we used method. This is the advantage. But limitation is that it is not suitable for large population. Suppose I have to select a representative sample from the India, including all the states, districts, then it will be really difficult. There will be a very, very big box and we cannot do it. It will not be practical for that purpose. And the second major limitation of this method of random selection is that somehow conscious or unconscious bias has been found to operate in this selection. Suppose I may have some preference for suppose and I am blindfolded, I am not saying something, but I can uh, sense with my uh, 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 hand that what is the size, what is the smoothness of the paper. Suppose I have a preference for a smooth paper, so if any paper feels smooth, I may select that. So if I am doing that, then this is either conscious or unconscious bias in selection. So this is uh, another limitation of this method and for demonstration purpose for practical classrooms this method can be used but in real research this is not used but since this is one method that has been used earlier I thought to discuss it. The methods that are generally used in real research involves the random number tables, this is the second way, and this is also now little outdated because what is being done with the random number tables can be easily done by the computer. But I will discuss this random number table approach also. Similar to the first method, the first step is that we had to number all the units of the population or the sampling frame that we have chosen. And then we will select, there is a big register or book you can say in which random numbers are written in different rows and columns. If you have not seen then I am describing this. We will open any one page of that book and then we will select any one number from that random number table and these random numbers are several digit numbers. So at this second step we decide depending on the size of the sample that we are suppose we have to select 100 participants so we will have to use only three digits. So, at the time of selection, we also decide that whether we will be using the last three digits or the uh, first three digits. So, we also decide that. And then, we will see what random number has been selected. If that random number will be less than the sample size, then we will select that numbered unit into the sample. But if the selected number is higher than, suppose it is the last three digit is 102, and we have to select 100, uh, we are having 100 units only in the population, so there is no likelihood that 100 set. 102 second participant will be available for sampling. So the number must not be higher than the largest number in the sampling frame. So if we have a sampling frame of 1000 then the number should not be higher than the largest number that is 1000. And if we are having 1000 elements, so there are 4 digits. So we will decide at the second step that we will use the last 4 digits or the first 4 digits of the random number table. 
and then as usual after selecting if the number is less than the largest number in the sampling frame then we select that unit include that unit into our sample and we repeat this step 2 and 3 until the desired sample size is reached. Now this tedious work of using random number table has been made easier and computer generated random numbers are possible so we can generate random numbers using computer or the computer based softwares are available for making random selections so it will do all the jobs that I have described in the uh, method of random number table for us and it will select the participants and it will tell us who, which number of participants we have to include into the uh, sample. Just to show you, I will uh, show you how we can generate uh, a random number. Suppose I am showing it with action. Suppose we have to select 10 participants from a population of 100 participants. So I will ask the Excel or the computer to generate random numbers. So I will use one formula, rand between. And the lowest number will be 1 and the highest number will be 100 since we have 100 participants and I will enter and then I will drag it up to the 10 units so you can see that this random number generated by Excel is suggesting that you, we have to select the 40th participant, the 52nd participant, the 67th participant, the 2nd participant. See, all the numbers are unique. Yeah. No one is duplicated and there are only 10 numbers. So these 10 participants will become the part of the sample. So this is just simple demo but there are other uh, softwares, procedures for helping us in random selection. So nowadays it is not required that we use uh, random number tables but even today when you will be studying statistics in your practical classes you will be introduced about the random number tables and you practice it. And sometimes these random number tables are still used because of some practical reasons. Finally, when sampling frame, so we cannot define the sampling frame and therefore we cannot list or number each and every unit. Suppose we have to select 1000 participant from the different states of India which are clubbed together and call the states in the Indo-Magnetic Plane. So Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, those states that are near the Ganges. Now, having, and there are so many residents, the population is so huge, so it will really be difficult to name and uh, number each and every individual in this broader area. So in this condition we generally follow the method of probability sampling that is called multi-stage cluster sampling. So we will randomly select some states in the Indo-Gangetic plane using random number table or the Excel generated random numbers. So suppose there are seven states in Indo-Gangetic plane, then I will ask my Excel 
and I want to select say only three states randomly. So I will ask the Excel to generate the random number between 1 and 7 and I will drag it to the three places and the three states with that number will be selected. Similarly, in each state we can select randomly few districts. So it is called multi states. Then we in each district we can select randomly some blocks and then in each block we can randomly select the towns or villages and now in villages we have to select the actual participant or in the towns we have to select the actual participant and, but we are not having the list we are not having the name of each and every participant then what methods so there are different methods one method is called random walk method so we will use random number tables we will go in that village and we will start sampling from the point suppose we met the person who is called Gram Pradhan and from his residence with his help we will start contacting individuals but randomly so what we will do we will if we are using random walk method we will select a random number between say 1 to 100 and suppose 16 comes then we will take 16 steps from the Pradhan's house and the house which comes after 16 steps will be selected from there again I will not take 16 step again I will again select one random number between 1 to 100 suppose this time it came 27 then I will take 27 steps 27 pairs and then the house that is coming at the 27th steps will be selected so we are walking in the relays but randomly why randomly because we are using random numbers so this method can be used where the random walk method where the sampling frame is difficult to define. So whether we are doing a stratified random sampling, whether we are doing simple random sampling, the one thing is common that the selection has to be done using random number table, uh, sorry, or a, a random selection method. We can use either random number table, we can use the computer generated random numbers or uh, any other method that I have described but the selection has to be done randomly. This is the core feature of all the probability sampling techniques. So I will not repeat all these techniques but suppose you are being asked to write about any uh, sampling technique then in brief you can write that the units are selected randomly and either of these three or four methods can be used depending on the situation or circumstances. Now let us take one technique at a time. So let us start with the unrestricted probability sampling that includes that is also called simple random sampling and there are two methods that I have discussed the sampling simple random sampling with replacement and simple random sampling without replacement so this as I earlier said the simple random sampling or sim simple random sample is also called unrestricted random sample why because we do not hold any restriction or condition on the random selection of the elements. For example, we do not say that we will have to select n number of participants from this village and uh, n one number of participants from another village. Or we are not imposing restriction that we have to select n one participants from males and n two participants from female population. So no restriction is imposed and therefore it is called unrestricted random sample also. 
So in this, we select n elements, and here this small n denotes the sample size. And there is debate whether we have to use capital M or a small m. I will not discuss that at this time. So we select n elements randomly, and from accessible population, you can watch my earlier video that I have made differentiation between accessible population and theoretical population. So theoretical population may include more elements, more units. But we can do impact sampling from those units of the population which can really be accessed or approached. If any element of the population is difficult to approach or is not accessible, how we can select them? So we will select n elements using some of the random number method or random selection method. And that will consist simple random sampling. In this method, when we will use random selection method, the beauty of this selection method is that it ensures an equal chance of being included in the sample. And the selection of one unit or one element of the population is not dependent on the selection of the other. So if any student from your class is being selected, the selection of that student will not influence the selection of the other if we are doing random sampling. But if we are doing some non-probability sampling, then that selection may influence the sampling procedure or the sampling of the next unit may be dependent. For example, there is one sampling technique called snowball sampling. I selected one student from your student, maybe randomly or incidentally, and then I will ask that you recommend a student similar to you, like you. Then what will happen? The next unit that is coming in my sample is dependent on the selection of the first element. But such dependency is not there in simple random sampling or random sampling methods. This is just repetition, but I will repeat it. The two methods, one is selecting an element randomly and then placing it again in the list of population. Then this is called simple random sample with replacement. We are replacing the unit. And another is selecting an element randomly and not placing it again in the list of population. So that is called simple random sample without replacement. So the method of drawing sample is called sampling. So when we will describe this as a method, then we will say simple random sampling without replacement. And the output of this procedure is that we will have a sample that is subset of units from the larger set that is called population. Then that subset, that is the outcome of this procedure will be called simple random sample with replacement or without replacement depending on what procedure we have followed. So, what are the differences between two methods? Some books you will find that they say that the probability of being selected is equal in simple random sampling with replacement. But in simple random sampling without replacement, since we are not replacing that, then the total size of the population is decreasing by 1 at each step of random selection. So the probability of the first selection is 1 by n, then next is 1 by n minus 1, then next is 1 by n minus 2. This is generally written and this is generally uh, understood particularly by those who are not having a statistical background. But 
if you go by the theories of statistics, then in both condition, the probability of being included in the sample of any unit is equal. It is always 1 by n. It is not 1 by n minus 1 in second step, 1 by n minus 2 in the third step. You can do Google and see the proof. So, it has been theoretically proven that even in simple random sampling with, uh, without replacement, the probability of being included is equal. Second is that in simple random sampling with replacement, there is a chance that the same element may be selected more than once. So, if it is being selected more than once, a person cannot be duplicated. So, if my name comes twice, then I will not include and I will go to the next person. But this type of difficulty will not be there when we are doing simple random sampling without uh, uh, replacement because the unit being selected will be out of the population and therefore there will be no chance no likelihood to select that unit again another difference between the two that is simple random sampling with replacement and without replacement is the number of all possible samples that can be drawn from the predefined population. So the number differs. The in simple random sampling with replacement the total number of all possible samples that can be drawn from a determine predetermined number of units in the population is n capital n raised to the power n and this capital n is the population number and uh, uh, sorry the uh, uh, let, let me finish then I will come whereas in the case of without replacement, the number of all possible samples will equal to factorial n divided by capital N minus a small n into the factorial of capital N minus a small n multiplied by n. So, just to make it simple, uh, I am skipping this explanation here, but you can ask me whenever you wish. Let us come into the advantages and disadvantages of the simple random sampling. There are a number of advantages of this method. First is that it provides more representative sample and less bias sampling. So sampling bias is minimum. There is no possibility of personal biases. My own personal biases will not endure in the sampling method. Similarly, it does not require the knowledge of the composition of the population beforehand. Because we are not making any restriction. We are not dividing the population into a strata. So for that, if we are going to divide it in a strata, then we have to have some knowledge about the composition of the population, but in simple random sampling, this is not required. It is easiest and simple of all the probability sampling methods. Next advantage is that it serves as foundation of all other methods of random or probability sampling. So all other methods basically are simple random sampling with some restrictions. So if we are doing a stratified random sampling, it is basically a simple random sampling but doing it for different strata. So simple random sampling method 
for males and then repeating it for females. So this is the foundation for all other methods of random or probability sampling. And these two terms are used interchangeably. The probability sampling techniques or random sampling methods. Another advantage is that sampling error associated with a particular sample drawn randomly can be assessed easily because sampling errors follow the principle of chance. And there are many, many other advantages, but in my list, the last one is that the chance of classification error. And what is classification error? inappropriate or improper classification of population is not present in this sampling method. Why? Because no classification of population is required for drawing the sample. So if we are using any method of probability sampling that requires classifying the population into different segments, strata like that, then classification error may occur there. But since we are not doing any classification in the population, such classification errors are also not there. So these are advantages. But it doesn't mean that it is not having limitations. There are disadvantages too. First one is that in general, a representative sampling frame is required for this method. And most of the times it is difficult to get. And when it is difficult to get, I have just said that then we go to other methods like random or method. Second limitation is that chance of selection of those elements which exist in population in very few numbers cannot be assumed. Suppose I am working in a population where in every one lakh there is one disabled person, but that disabled person is there in the population and the total population is only two lakh, so there are only two disabled person when I will select the sample from this population of two lakh units the chance of getting a disabled person in the sample will be very low. This is one limitation. Another limitation is, though I have written, that the knowledge of stratification, segmentation with population is not utilized. Why it is limitation? Because the population is assumed to be homogeneous in this method. But in reality, we know that the population is rarely homogeneous. Even in your class, there are males and females. There are some students from Delhi, or say North India, and there are some from South India. So some form of heterogeneity is there. And we are not segmenting the population at the time of selection. So the chances of getting a representative sample, though theoretically, it will say that yes, simple random sample will give a representative, but because of this limitation, this is less likely. Similarly, another limitation is that the sampling error associated with simple random sampling or this method of sampling is greater than the stratified sampling. Why? Because a stratified random sample is more representative than the simple random sample because it takes into account the existing heterogeneity in the population. Another limitation is that A, the size of the sample, simple random sample, required to ensure statistical reliability is larger than that of a stratified random sample. 
so we will have to draw a larger sample if we really want to get a representative sample if we are using simple random sampling but the sample size can be reduced by using some segmentation some stratification like it is done in stratified random sampling from the point of view of data collection this type of sample requires more cost effort and time why because we will select the unit in advance and when we will go to approach them the first difficulty is that they are too widely dispersed geographically second the chance of attrition is there suppose we randomly selected any person when we visited his house he is out of his station and we have not contacted that person because our random number table said that this random numbered person have to be included so these are some limitations and the final is that if sample size is small the simple random selection method may produce a sample that appears to be a non random sample however theoretically it has been proven that such chances very very low so here i will stop uh, and i will discuss the stratified random sampling and other methods in next class thank you very much